Welcome to Destination Utopia. I'm Bunny Williams, and with me is my co-host... Rose. <laughs> so, we are going to try to figure out what Utopia or the perfect society is, and how really far away we are from it. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> as soon as you think of, like, one good thing, you can think of five bad things going on and how they could be improved. Yeah. Uh, well, just kind of simply, I, I think you don't work, you don't get sick, you don't die. Well, you don't you die. Know. I mean, that's, I don't know, it's kind of obstructing the natural order of everything. Why? Well, everything dies. There's a cycle. If nobody's dying, there's just too many people. And I don't think I'm going to mind dying. I think it's part of life. I, I don't think I'm going to mind dying either, and I'm a lot closer to it than you are. But <laughs> Well, you don't know that. It, it, it's a big universe. There's plenty of room for us to not die. Well, that's true. That's why utopian society has to have opportunities for space exploration and colonization of other planets. Mm -hmm. You know, and just because it's necessarily the natural order of things does not necessarily mean that we are bound to it. It doesn't necessarily, you know, that doesn't mean it's, it could still be a bad idea, but it's my idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if we if we can get that worry away, mm -hmm. you know, like. But you know, I think people might not want to live forever. They might get to the point where they've seen enough stuff and they choose that it's just time to go to sleep and let it go. Well, you have to make sure they have the option to do that, too. Right. That might simply be a choice if somebody is yeah, able to. Yeah, that's make. fair. You know, but, like, where might, we, where might we be if somebody like Mozart did not die? You that's know? a good point. Or... Einstein, you know, or some of the great geniuses or great artists or anything like that, how much further would their talents have gone? Where would Led Zeppelin be if they had not broken up? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I might know more about them if they were still together. <laughs> so so are... that where would we be if you know, Hitler just wouldn't ever freaking die? Yeah, yeah, but you know, we would have to have ironed out what utopia is so that a person yeah. like Hitler would not be there. That's a good point. Utopia has to not grow any weeds. So, what thoughts did you have? Uh, yeah, I think utopia, going on what I said about people having a choice to die, definitely people are allowed the freedom, individuality to express themselves and follow their own paths and not be held to any kind of rigid ideal. Right. Like when you read a lot of utopian books or watch the movies, like they're all very, they're scheduled out by the government and they have to behave a certain way. And it's the only way it seems people have been able to conceptualize utopia is everybody mm -hmm. being kind of controlled so that they right. don't act out and cause bad things to happen. But, you know, I think if people have the opportunity to be successful and excel when they're, you know, behaving well and doing good things, that would make a lot of difference, kind of encouraging people to not go on rampages or anything like that, not right. exploit other people or murder, all that good stuff. Yeah. There's plenty of opportunities. Yeah. I would totally like to see a lot more freedom in the world. Uh, a lot more ability for people to actually reach their potential as opposed to working a job. Yeah. You know. Is there some way for people that you know, either people have money and no time or time and no money to ever cultivate their talents and explore their talents? Right. And there's lots of people that are not being utilized because they you know, don't have money to be noticed, have money to go to school have money uh -huh. to do anything but work retail 24-7. Yeah. 
money is something I think we would definitely have to get rid of sooner or later because it's such a big pain in the ass. And it's, it's again, one of the – like most of, most of everything in the world is kind of just a fiction that we have made up. That's very and we true. Don't really, we don't really have to deal with it, you know? And money is one of them. And I find that uh, – I find the culture of greed that we're currently in uh, like a huge mental problem on a mass scale, mm-hmm. you know? People who are collecting money to such a point – that we have come very, very close several times to causing an uh, uh, an economic collapse where all that money would then be nothing. Right, yeah. The only value we have on it is in our minds, the perception of it. it, It's like a sickness going on that's really strange. You know, Mm -hmm. like... Yeah, when you you step out and look at it, like, it's so weird. Yeah. So... That's something that would have to go away. Um, yeah, our economic system is all junked up. Not that you know, capitalism uh, is actually necessarily bad, but the extent that we've just uh, I think it, really. I think capitalism is complete and utter bullshit because we are not a capitalist country. Right. There are capitalists in this country and the economy works for the capitalists, okay? But none of us are taught in school what it is to be a capitalist, how to be a capitalist, how to We're work taught how to work for the capitalists. Hmm? We're taught how to work for the capitalists and for the corporations. Right. We are taught to be consumers. Exactly. Because the capitalists need a lot more consumers. Well, I think that's kind of like it's more of a corporate issue. So these big corporations that need little workers and little consumers, and not everybody's really benefiting from it, except they get stuff. You know, they could make small scale and give their neighbors money, but instead they're giving all their money to the big, you know, top 20 corporations for everything they need. Right. Right. I personally think Star Trek type replicators would solve that. Oh, definitely, yeah. We're now getting there. Three D printing. Yeah, three D printing. Yeah, that's some We're interesting there. stuff. I don't know if it's gonna get to the direction of uh, replicators, though. But it is certainly interesting. Um, mm-hmm. Because Star Trek never really pushed that very much. It was like, oh, here's a neat gadget that we kind of have. But that that particular gadget would be just so completely revolutionary because then all that would really need to exist is matter and energy, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And you would own nothing and everything at the same time. Well, that's crazy. I never thought about it that way. You know, so... You like Star Trek, though. You, you get up in the morning to go to work, and you replicate your car. <laughs> and except for that time that you're using the car, the car does not exist. Mm-hmm. And you have that matter and you have that energy to use for other things that you may need throughout the day. And at the end of the day, you re-replicate the car, you go home. So anything you needed in your life, you would you would you would want decorations and things like that, things that were around the house in a more permanent way. Mm-hmm. But then a lot of other things, dishes. <laughs> you know, I was just doing the dishes before you called. I hate doing the dishes. Yeah, like if only I could just put the dish back in my machine and then make a new one when I'm hungry again. Yeah, they, they all disappear. And then when you, <laughs> dishes, you just recreate them. <laughs> they're for real. And they're all clean. And they come so out clean, if, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if that was the situation, 
how won't be much wasting of plastic and paper, you know, wasting time washing it or anything. Yeah. How much of a need for money would there be? Uh, another idea that I personally really like for a utopian society. Um, you, you, you familiar much with Isaac Asimov? Not at all. And his robot stories, his three laws of robotics and all that? Uh-uh. Oh, oh you should read some. Um, I should. He, throughout the course of his writing career, and particularly writing about robots, developed the robots to a stage where the robots were called the angels. And it was just their greatest joy to serve humans. Mm -hmm. And that's all they did. So the angels would go to work, you know, if we needed to build a spaceship, the angels would do that. You know, so they would simply take care of all of our needs. Right. And you would you would have the three laws of robotics, which I would, I would actually have to look it up. Somebody out there knows it. <clears throat> it's like the same laws are in iRobot. It's like you, uh, do not, you don't hurt people, you don't steal. Yes, you don't murder, you don't steal. Someone other one. Uh, it is nasty. Now I'm going to have to look it up. <laughs> Uh, iRobot I, uh, was an Isaac Asimov story. Okay, you know, that makes sense then. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not a big Will Smith person. Um, oh. Uh, a better one to try is Bicentennial Man with Robert Williams, uh, Robin Williams. Okay. That's well, a good I think one I may have out. seen that one like a few years ago or something. I'll have to watch it again. Uh, that is Robin Williams as a robot as he strives to be human. Well, crazy. I think that would cause a lot of problems. You know, artificial intelligence came, like, really sentient. And, you know, there's a possibility of, you know, a rebellion, a whole Terminator type thing going on. I'm a little bit sketchy about AI. Okay. Well, here are I do the three laws. Of, myself. Here are the three laws of robotics that prevents them from going all Terminator on us. Uh, law one: a robot may not injure a human being, or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Law two: a robot must obey the orders given to it by human beings except where such orders would conflict with the first law. And then three, a robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Yeah, I think they would find a way to kind of erase that from their coding. Why would they want to? Why would they not want to? They're going to be like, you know, what if we could do our own thing? We're going to build something. You know, it could start small. They want to build their own building or something. I'll decide to do that. And people telling them not to do that, I'm like, oh, we're going to change our coding, and it won't work anymore. You can't tell us what to do. But something like a robot or a computer would be would be the accumulation of what its programming is. Uh -huh. If you don't put those things into a robot, then it, it would not do those things. It's not supposed to do those things. How often do computers just act the way they're supposed to? Well, that's because computers are kind of built like shit, mostly. <laughs> that's a, a utopian that's a robot cool. would work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Next we have so, robots doing everything for us. What are we going to do with our time? I feel like people, lots of people I know, and myself included, have kind of a hard time getting motivated to do all the stuff that we want to do. And we do kind of use not have enough time as an excuse a lot of the time. Yeah. And we have time to do it. Like, what are we going to do with it? And how are we going to get everybody pumped to be, you know, proactive in our society? Well, you would do what you want to do. And even if that is doing nothing, <laughs> you know. 
But I don't know if people are doing nothing, people, do you? I don't know. Because robots are doing are, everything, that's fine. There are plenty of people that if, if they had the time, there are a lot of things that they would be doing. Mm-hmm. You know? They may end uh, up like the people in Wally. I would be cranking out a lot more films, <laughs> me personally. Yeah. You know, if I had the time, I, I would I would be a lot more active than I am now. Mm-hmm. You know, because I wouldn't have to go to work all day and then come home tired and need a nap because I'm old. <laughs> you know? You would be like, okay, let's wake up and let's do something really fucking awesome. <laughs> right. You know? You know? I mean, the and, ideal and, is everybody would find their niche and you know, what they really love to do and just do it all day. Yeah. You know, um, but but I think I think most people would do something, mm-hmm. and I think I think what they would do is they would wind up living up to their true actual potential, and mm-hmm. some people would do nothing, and that's that's that would in my world that would be fine too. Right, a lot of people doing would, nothing anyway. That would be your freedom of choice, and if you want to just cop out and watch Tom and Jerry cartoons, hey, that's all right, you know. You're not bothering anybody. Yeah. You know. We definitely don't want you know, too much people in that society doing that. Because then everybody that's you know, doing everything with the robots, of course, and your society and culture is kind of, kind, of, kind of stagnate. And you're not pumping out any new technologies the way you could be or new ideas or, you know, traveling space. Or too many people are just sitting around watching cartoons. I just don't think that would happen. I just don't think that I don't would know. happen. I'd I like I mean, to, I think I'm just more cynical than you. Yeah, I think you would have a lot more people who have always wanted to do things actually doing them. Yeah, that's know, what I want to see. To, but... As opposed to working at Denny's. Yeah. You know, so I think we would have a lot more technology. We would have a lot more art, you know, and we would also have a lot more variety in those things because it wouldn't be up to government grants and things like that for research yeah, on this very particular true. thing or this particular thing. You know, so I thought it was kind a of a, that's a hurdle for a lot of things to get the money for it, get the government grants for the research or the, you know, to make the building or whatever. Mm-hmm. And if it's not in favor, you know, for the government, and it's not in anybody's interest, not going to make money off of it, they're never going to fund it, and it's never going to get done. Right. Right, exactly. You know, if we're going to research something, it's got to have some kind of a profit margin somewhere. Yeah, that's very true. You know, where there can be a lot of things that we can explore where maybe there isn't so much of a profit margin, but it would still be better for us. Yeah, I was kind of talking about this the other day and getting, like, really pissed off about it. What in particular? Get pissed off. Let's hear it. (laughs) No, no. Not my parents, my in-laws house. I'm going to yell too much. It's the fact that, you know, you can't get anything going unless you can foresee a profit in it. Right. And then everything gets framed that way, and how can I make a profit, and then kind of drives the focus back to making money. Mm-hmm. Kind of in this cycle, in the system, that's the focus, and everything makes you focus on it. And everybody is just kind of in a survival mode, making money, making money so they can eat, and it goes on and on. Right. And that's kind of, you know, it's made up in our heads, too. Cause, you know, tribal people, foragers, gatherers, hunters, they were never homeless, ever. That's kind of a product of my modern society in the cities, homelessness. Mm-hmm. They won't even let them go, like, you know, create their own shelters or anything. So it's just, like, really fucked up. Not only people try to make it legal, essentially, to be homeless and give homeless people food or help them very much, they're kind of being limited in the ways they can help themselves. Right. Well, you know, it, it would help a lot if we didn't view them like they were parasites. Yeah, that would you definitely know? help a lot. Like, when we do and, that, it just drives them further underground. Yeah, and, oh, just for a second, maybe, oh, maybe I'm getting a little weird here. Treat them like they're people. Mm-hmm. Kind of a wild idea, you know. 
And people kind of get all people. upset. They have, they're have they eventually ill a lot of the time. No, well, it doesn't make them any less human. They just need a little bit extra help. Mm-hmm. And yeah. criminalizing them is definitely not going to help at all. Yeah. So instead of instead of driving the homeless out of the city into little shanty town shacks under a bridge mm-hmm. where they can't be seen, maybe you figure out what to do with that, that person and how to help that person mm-hmm. so that they're not in the city. And it even you know, go further into it, like why are there homeless people? Mm-hmm. Tons of reasons for why there are homeless people. Mm-hmm. Uh, people who are definitely down on their luck. Uh, people with mental illnesses who are simply not able to function in society. Mm-hmm. Um, and and there are such there a are high the rare homeless few. population. Which one? What? There's some cities with a very high homeless population. Like Seattle is one of them. There's certain areas there's homeless people everywhere you kind of have to I mean I don't know exactly and nobody's ever going to know exactly probably all of the checks and balances in society and economy that you know cause things like that you know somebody should, can look into it and kind of see you know the patterns that cause that mm-hmm. and get to the root cause of it and that's the only way to really you know take a big chunk out of it yeah yeah but you really can't find the root cause unless you actually start doing something about it, mm-hmm. you know? And and you take this homeless person and you find out why they're homeless and what it is you need to do to help them. And then you take this other this other homeless person and do the same thing and find out that their reasons are very different for why they're there and how this has happened. Right. So that you have to come up with several solutions to try to help these people. Yeah. And not make it illegal to feed them. Yeah. Good Christ, That's what a so disgusting silly. society does that. Yes, what a disgusting society like elects these people and knows that they're shit. Like that's a running joke as politicians, ha ha, like, okay, why don't we stop electing them? Mm-hmm. Why don't we just tell them if they don't do what they say, and we elect them because we like their message, and they said they're going to do these things. If they don't follow through, they should be kicked out. Mm-hmm. And they do stuff like that, we should be kicking them out. Not re-electing somebody else and their terms over. They should be kicked out, like, right now. Yeah, yeah. We, we need to be able to gain more power than we actually have to mm-hmm. be able to do things like that. That's because very true. In my view, politicians are all fairly much cut from the same claw. You know, so I think there's a certain kind of person that wants to be a politician that wants that kind of power. That's almost what it feels like. Is that is that somebody who strives? Almost like once you start down the path, you're starting down that path because you're a dickhead to begin with. <laughs> and then and then it only becomes, well, are you a red dickhead or are you a blue dickhead? Uh Uh-huh. You know? Which group is the easier for you to win over? Uh Uh-huh. You know, so... I don't know. For for that, I think, you know, maybe we have to get, like, a lot more local with things like that, where, Mm -hmm. where... they're, they're, the politicians themselves are lower down on the food chain so that they're easier to scare. Yeah. You know. So the thing is, like, people okay. have to be a lot more educated, and it takes a lot of work to really be involved in your government. Mm-hmm. Well, it shouldn't be as much work if our news wasn't shit. Well, that's true, yeah. a whole yeah. different problem. So all you know, of the propaganda. Yeah, where you know, if we can actually get some real news mm-hmm. and actually know what's going on, that would be a great help. Yeah, there's actual you know, news and not, you know, talking pieces, stuff they're allowed to talk about. 
Right. They kind of, you know, they shift our attention to different things. And it's none of those things are actually important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, let's try to figure out what is important, you know, and get that on the table, get talking about it, and get the, the local politicians to recognize that. Mm-hmm. That's not to start local. You know, okay, we have X amount of homeless here. Our school system is X in the nation, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. Our our jobs are, you know, blah, 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 whatever. You, Mr. Politician, what is your plan to improve these things? And then we vote on whoever has the best plan. And if they don't do it, they don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's good to you know, have that kind of localized and the community around it instead of watching it on the news. The news will, you know, they won't show certain people, even in the debates. They'll just kind of skip over people. And it always goes from red to blue, red to blue. Everybody else is ignored. Right. Right. And and that's why it's always been traditional that a third party candidate has has never had a prayer in this country. Mm-hmm. Which right from the get go that idea is kind of bullshit where, you know, it, anybody who's running for president should have as equal a chance as anybody else. Yeah, they have to get their message out there equally. Ralph Nader was a damn interesting choice when he was running around, but he didn't have a hope in hell. Yeah. You know, and there's been a few others who have sprung up here and there. And a lot of the times, a third-party candidate can really either be a, a big fresh of air, you know, breath of fresh air, or a real total whack job. Well, I mean, that can go with the Democratic Party to Republicans. You know, they all do some whack jobs. There's very few people are like, oh, wow, what you said actually makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you've been – have you been hearing much about this guy, Bernie Sanders, an independent in Vermont? Uh, a little bit. Not too much. What have you heard about him? There's a lot – I haven't heard of anything about him in particular, but he is putting out a lot of stuff through his, his Facebook page. Uh, and it's all really common sense kind of stuff, you know, and it's, mm-hmm. it's, you know, corporations must pay their taxes, just like everybody else. The banks mm-hmm. have too much control of this country, and that's got to stop. And a lot of other things that makes him a really kind of an interesting candidate. Um, you should look up his page. I think you, I, I think you would be interested. Oh, yeah, I have seen his stuff on Facebook. I kind of always take Facebook stuff with a grain of salt. Yes. Oh, God. Yes, I have to yes. go look at, like, his page and, like, his, his more official stuff. Yeah. 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 What I always yeah. like to do is there was one site I found. I don't know if I'll find it again, but it kind of just gave a history of every politician's votes, what they voted for, what they voted against. And really, that's the most important thing to know, and that's the information that isn't out there for everybody. They get to yeah. see these guys talking out their ass and get to see, you know, the media's commentary on it, but they don't have a clear picture of their actual track record. Yeah. Those are the kinds of resources that we really need, you know. Mm-hmm. I haven't been able to find that site. Like, I don't know why. If you do, we'll throw it up on the on the Facebook page. Yeah, I'll look for it again. again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so we can find out who's full of shit and who's not full of shit. Right now, mm-hmm. everybody's full of shit as far as I care. Well, as far as you can really tell, anyway. Yeah. Um, right now, the biggest things that are, like, kind of pissing me off on Facebook is, uh, like, mixing issues. Right. You know, like, like you'll see a lot of, um, oh, God. It's one of the... It's kind of compare and contrast people. things that, you know, apples and oranges, you can't, like, compare them. They're not related. Just kind of yeah. 
get to compare and contrast going. So people are like, oh, well, I don't like that. I like this thing. So you must be right. Right. Get like, that like, set uh, in their mind. How can we how can we allow this to happen to our veterans, and we do this for illegal aliens? Mm-hmm. That kind that kind of a thing, and it's like, uh, okay, well, these two things are two separate things, <laughs> you know. And if we were the kind of country that we should be, then we would be able to help the veterans and the illegal aliens. Uh huh. We're gonna be like having war everywhere. We're putting money into like our actual society. Yeah, I, I I really let me be frank. I really hate our government, and I really and I really hate the wars that they're sending. Mm-hmm. They're, they're fighting and all of that. Okay, but the actual military people themselves, I I feel a loss for them. Okay. Yeah. We we need them. Okay. Oh yeah, definitely. It's not their fault. That they have to do what they're told like to do. This. Like they vowed to do that, no matter how shitty it was. Exactly, and we need that because if hey, if there's another Hitler, they're the ones we're we're going to grab, and they have mm-hmm. to be taken care of. And first off, I don't think a lot of people can see the difference between those t- two things. That there are well, I think I think we should definitely kind of explain the difference and put it out there and define, you know, the two things and how they're different. Mm-hmm. And these people who go through wars, we need to take care of them. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no reason for these people to be homeless. You know, that should all be provided for them for the service that they've done to the country. Yeah, it should be part of it. It should be part of the deal. Yeah. Then you go to something like illegal aliens. This is a completely different topic now. Mm -hmm. You have to consider that a lot of places in Central America and Mexico, like, they're refugees. Uh, Especially they're coming from... Yeah. I I guess it all depends on how we define refugee. You know, there are definitely some, some that are very classically a refugee where they're escaping, mm-hmm. you know, completely horrible conditions. Now they're leaving because they don't want their family to be dead. Right. There's that, there's that as well where they're trying to escape just economic hardship, but nobody is particularly is going to shoot them. But it's still bad enough where they're going to risk their lives mm-hmm. to get into America. Now, like several things, I, I I have a solution to this, but nobody listens to me. Fix Mexico. Right. We can send we can send foreign aid all over the fucking world. We can't do this for our for our southern our neighbors. neighbors. I think it's because the government actually does want them coming in and and picking up work and forever. they have their reasons, I'm sure. You, they want to you, create this conflict and have this whole turmoil going. You they don't want to fix Mexico. Mexico. You fix Mexico, and then once Mexico is fixed, then us and Mexico fix Venezuela. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm not great on my geography going downhill like that. But, you know. No, there's in Central America, there's Guatemala, El Salvador. I think Honduras is right in there. So, um, and then. Then you have then you have a bunch of Mexicans in Mexico being like, I can hang here. It's all right. Yeah. I don't I don't want to go anywhere. Problem solved. Yeah. And we, and we right. they have a lot of corruption in their government too, and perhaps our corrupt government trying to fix them would never work out so well. So I think if we want to fix Mexico, it has to be a grassroots movement and people. That care, that want to look into it and see what they can do. So the government should throw money at it and throw soldiers at it and probably fuck it up more. Now that's the idea about going to Iraq and everything. We're going to fix it. And it's all fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Uh, yeah. What a cost the fuck that was. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. That's unbelievable. That has now been going on for half my life. Probably more than half now. 
you, and considering, yeah, yeah like, this death when I was a baby, it's like, no, like, my whole entire fucking life. Well, we, we should probably state that for anybody who's listening. I am, I am 51. How, how old are you now, Rose? I'm almost 25. 25. Yeah. That's, man, yeah, that's... I, I've seen a few wars already. So, yeah, going on half your life. That, that, that's... And that's kind of why I wanted you for the for the show because you can bring that kind of perspective that I would simply just never think of. Because it's just <laughs> going on almost half your life too. <laughs> what? It's going on like half your life too. Like you saw like um, Vietnam, right? Well, war you're, in general, like, yeah. Yeah, like you're a kid during that. I and mean, the timeline isn't great, but, like, you're a kid doing that or something. You saw all these wars coming and going. It's been in the Middle East for, like, uh-huh. ever, last 25 years. Yeah. I remember growing up as a kid just being convinced that I was going to grow up and die. Mm-hmm. That was it. You know? I, I'm going to I'm gonna grow up, and I'm going to turn 18, and then I'm going to die shortly after that. Yeah. Cause, that kind of cause that Vietnam too. was always on the news. Mhm. You know, and th- that's all you were really hearing about was people dying in this war and this war that didn't seem to stop, and nobody knew why we were fighting it. Mhm. You know. Yeah. That, we, can we, we even tell us what we're doing now in the Middle East? Do we really know? Like we're out there, you know, we're bombing shit, looking for those terrorists. Maybe it's a fucking terrorist if it's not us. Well, now I really think that we're into the whole Orwellian forever war kind of thing. Oh, yeah, definitely. Where... Because you know, it was Al-Qaeda, now it's ISIS. You know, it was this even, guy, now it's that guy. Yeah, and now ISIS has kind of gone by the wayside and things like that. And yeah, I haven't heard anybody bitching be... about them for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they, were, they were hot for a while, you know. Um, mm-hmm. we're, we're getting terrorist groups kind of like one hit wonder pop bands <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know so we can kind of equate uh, we can kind of equate L- uh, ISIS to like wham <laughs> you know? okay, or, or to Backstreet Boys or NSYNC they, yeah they did it they did a couple of things a little while ago but you know now they've kind of broken up and it's <laughs> You know, new members, old members kind of doing their own thing. Some of them are still in business, but, you know. Yeah. 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 They'll, they'll, they'll maybe get together in 10 years, have kind of a reunion, take over the time, <laughs> you know. Come out with a new single, see how it goes. Terrorize them for a while and be like, you know, thank you, guitar, good night. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll be gone again. Yeah. So, yeah, but but to keep us fighting, to keep us scared, seems like mm-hmm. a big thing. Also, to you make know? money, there's people that are investing in the companies that are you know making the tanks and ammunitions and blah blah blah, everything that we need for this. And they have reasons to keep it going. They use their political power. You know, they mm-hmm. fund who they know will keep the war going. They give them bribes. You know, they lobby. Blah blah blah. And it's just a big machine. They just want to make their money, and they don't give a fuck. Yeah. Mhm. Yeah. It keeps the industrial military complex running. And yeah. Making money. And and you know, the only way for it to succeed is for it to keep going and keep getting bigger. Mhm. Mhm. And we are we are running out of fuel, and we are not hearing about anybody having any kind of alternative ideas. And fracking is a really, really stupid answer. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's other I mean, there's things out there people coming up with, but it's always really quiet. They never get very far. Mm-hmm. You know, the stories you have to you know you get it on the internet to like, well, you know, maybe, maybe not. And it's all you press technology. They, their lab gets cleaned out by the feds and stuff like this. You hear about it. It's kind of you know it's an undercurrent all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And you would have to think, though, that the that the oil companies themselves would have to have backup plans. Right. They have to be something they can make money off of. When you are getting down to a point where you are fracking, you know, 
that's it. We, we are now scraping the bottom of the barrel for any kind mm-hmm. of energy. That's exactly what we're doing, you know? And that's what the first hands are, too. Like, they're going to spend so much energy and cause so much pollution and damage to get this, you know, wash out the sand and the oil. And it's such mm-hmm. a huge waste of resources, and you're fucking up everything while you're doing it. You're yeah. creating these yeah. huge scars on the earth. They're now, like, they're not going to be growing anything for years and years, decades, about 100 years. Yeah. So I don't know why they would not just come out and be like, you know, we've been kind of holding on to the solar energy thing for a while. Might be a good time to break <laughs> it out now. Why are we going to wake the earth to such a point where it could just completely crumbles mm-hmm. before we do something else? And I am going under the assumption that oil companies do have an alternate plan because I can't see how they could possibly not. Okay, I don't know. It must be something they can make money off of. They have to put a patent on their super special solar panels. I don't know. Yes. Well, I, I would never suggest that they're doing it for magnanimous reasons, but sooner or later the money is going to run out when the oil runs out. You know, there's, mm-hmm. If there's no oil, you know, they're not going to have any more money in it. So, for so what? Do oil companies just fold up and go away? <laughs> I think I they, those people just go into a different form of business. Well, yeah, but I would think that that different form of business would be alternate energies. Maybe. I don't know. I just can't think of what that would be. You know, I, I, would, I, would, I would kind of think that that all the people that they have bought off, all the people who have come up with alternatives, you know, all the things that we've heard about, the things that you're talking about, the gas pill or new solar energy panels and things like this that we've heard rumors about, I, I would think that the oil companies would have them all in a vault somewhere, you know? <laughs> Oh, that makes sense. And just be like, okay, well, you know, we're kind of out of we're kind of out of oil now. Maybe it's time to break into the vault. <laughs> you know, come up with something mm-hmm. else. The, the only thing I could possibly think of is that, you know, maybe they do have that stuff, but they can't figure out how to charge people to the sun. Yeah, you know? well, that's exactly it. Once once that gets out, it's out. You know, and you're not going to get that genie back in the bottle again, and you're not making a profit on it. Mm hmm. You know, that's the only thing yeah, I can really do. It's all about them be. being in control and being able to turn that profit. Yeah. Yeah. To the detriment of everything. Mm-hmm. Including themselves, really, in the long run. You know, to, to where the earth itself could potentially end out of out of this this greed culture. Mm-hmm. And definitely won't be habitable for us anymore. I have to you know find ways to live with it, deal with polluted water that's just toxically polluted most of the time, and polluted air, everything's mm-hmm. toxic. They're gonna make money mm-hmm. selling us gas masks and air and water filters. Yeah. They sold us to the disease, and they just sell us the cure. So these are definitely some of the things that have to stop in order for us to get to our utopian civilization. Mm-hmm. So utopia would be free energy. We go with Tesla. Um, yeah, Tesla. You know, they... they they keep saying that, that the things he came up with are really not feasible, but at the same time, he was such a genius. I, I can't really believe that. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing was, he didn't... The stuff that he found, it wasn't in a way that people could be charged for it. Right. They're saying it's not feasible. It may not be feasible because they can't charge people for it. And people are just kind of locked into... This way, they, this, things being this way, the way they are, being the only possible way. Yeah. And they want, you know, the 
electricity, the power system, the grid to be kind of centralized. And I don't think it should be. So it yeah. can avoid the outages if it's not centralized. Nobody can attack it and take out all your power. So everybody has, or each village or whatever, has their own little power station. It's not polluting. It's enough for their village. You know, that would be perfect. Right. Maybe everybody has their own small, kind of diversified ways of creating their own energy. Like, you know, there's wind, there's water, there's hydro. No, it's the tidal mm-hmm. generators. These are the tidal waves. The tide coming in and out. It's just the pressure of the water pushing up against it. Right. So I don't think there's any one silver bullet that will answer all of our dreams. But I think it needs to be diversified, and people can use you know, the kind that works best in their region. And people have little experts working on it and create their own kind of energy culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that might be some good ideas. All I know is we've got to do something. <laughs> yeah. And it's looking like we've got to do something really quick. I mean, that's that's the thing about fracking that gets me is that, like, it's so stupid that it also shows me what's so really wrong and kind of scary, you know, for for us to even be doing that. We've got to be in a much worse state when it comes right. to energy than we're being told. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, they want panic. They want people coming up with anything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Cops should stop shooting people. I think. Well, yeah, yeah. I think if there is less violence overall, I'm not saying it's everybody else's fault, but I think the cops would, because they're kind of being forced to tone it down kind of gradually now. Like people are kind of, you know, saying, hey, this isn't cool, and actually stepping up. And they're becoming a lot more watched, you know, via the internet. It's helped a lot. Yeah. But I think the violence throughout all of the society has to come down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. But I think the police definitely brought this cop hate on themselves. There's lots of corruption. There's lots of, lots of dickheads, kind of egotistical maniacs who build themselves up and they kind of get off on you know, hurting people and shooting people and dominating people. And that's yeah. another profession that a certain kind of person is drawn to because they are allowed to act like this. And they see this, and they want to come in. They want to be the dickhead. Mm-hmm. So I do think a lot of them, you know, there are dickheads like that. And there's a yeah. reason they're a cop, and it's not to help people. There there used to be quite a lot of pride with police and their ability I'm not sure how I want to put it, man. It it used to be a, a bigger badge of honor for a cop to be able to put down an, ass, an assailant without having to use his weapon. Uh-huh. You know, because he's a bigger badass. He can kick some ass. You know what Right. I mean? They should be trained on you know, things besides just their weapons, like maybe non-lethal force. Mm-hmm. Uh... You know, I, well, just going to non-lethal force on that subject for a second, you know, because, like, this seems all kind of new, and it's certainly taken on a new flavor, but this has been going on for a while. I don't, I don't know if you remember in the, in the early 2000s all the videos on YouTube of cops tasering people. Mm-mm. You know? So, like, it, it was going on then, just people weren't dying. You know, mm-hmm. but they would do you think that our for police no force reason. has become? Oh, sorry. What's that? Do you think our police force has become more militarized since then? Oh, oh, well, that's 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 provable. It most certainly has okay. become more militarized. They're, they're getting tanks for Christ's sake. Why do the police need tanks? Right. And I said, well, crowd you know? control. Why do you need to control crowds like that? Exactly. If the crowd is really, like, going crazy, you need a tank. I think that's the reason it's going to be going crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
why do we need tanks? Why do we need these kinds of, of weapons and body armor and and things like that? You know, we have a lot of cops that are better well armed and armored than the military. Mm-hmm. I love that pool. Why well, are the military becoming, is what is supposed to Why are you becoming that afraid of your own people? Uh huh. You know, that's the question that really has to get asked here. Why I think it's Why? the government as a whole kind of protecting themselves from their own people. That's a question yeah. to ask, you know, that big group. Why are you afraid of your own people? Mm-hmm. What are you doing? Yeah. It's so horrible. Yeah. And and it's it's almost like that's that's enough of, a, of an excuse to want to rip the government down and start again. You're uh-huh. that afraid of us. You know, you've got to be doing something you shouldn't be doing besides the obvious, right. of course. You know, uh, <clears throat> You're not a good government anymore. You gotta go. Mhm. You know, cops always like to say, you know, well, if you're not you're not hiding anything, then you know, why are you worried that you know we're gonna search you? And if you're not doing anything wrong, why do you need a tank? Mhm. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm not doing anything wrong, why you gotta search me? Mhm. Well, I you shouldn't know. be searching me. Not at all. So I've never you, been, I've never been assaulted assuming. or anything by police or anything. I've just gotten speeding tickets. Yeah. Do you know when I actually did need cops, they didn't help me at all. <laughs> mm-hmm. What yeah, else should we tackle? Um, I'm not sure. How about technical? My husband's going to be coming back pretty soon. I have to drive to Port Angeles. Yeah. I think of something. I think education. Education needs to be a lot better. There needs to be a different way and, you know, better subjects. I feel like I was homeschooled. I felt like in middle or in elementary school, like through all the grades and the, you know, the elementary, junior high, and high school, you're kind of like you're learning the same things. You're just learning more about the same things. A lot of it's stuff that we don't we don't really use. It's and there's good basics to know, but I really think kids' interests should be taken into account. Right. And what they're good at, interested in, you should teach them everything they can possibly know about that. Yeah. And give them uh, good basics and really feed their interests. So they can, you know, start excelling at an early age and like, what would they want to do. Yeah. Me, personally, I am perfectly okay with free education, you know, up to you get your doctorate, you know. Uh-huh. It, 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 let's stop pretending that this is a priority and let's make it a priority. Okay? Right. Politicians have been saying that shit about education for forever, you know. And it does seem to me like... um Public school itself has improved a bit since I went, uh, but it's still not the priority it should be. Mm-hmm. And higher education is a joke. I, 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 yeah. I, I cannot look at anybody like around your age and say, oh, you should go to school. No, fuck that. You know, you're going to go to school, you're going to come out, you're going to work at McDonald's in an entry-level job, the same as if you did not. What is well, that's very cynical. <laughs> and you're going to be $300,000 or more in debt. Mm-hmm. What is the point of that madness? So the reason I want to go to school, the reason I'm going to school, is because I want to learn things. And I do like yeah. kind of a structured in having mentors and everything. So I think when you go to school and go to college, you should be going for what your interests are, not to get a degree so you can get a better job because that just doesn't even work. You need to go and study where you're interested and what you want to do, and then you will be able to use that for your life's work, for the things that you want to study for your whole life and for the research that you want to do for you. And not for your job will be better because that honestly doesn't even work. 
like until you get up into the doctorates and all that. Right. I don't know. I don't see much point in it. <laughs> I, well, I, I like see, going to school. You know, <laughs> what's that? I just like going to school. Well, you know, that's a different issue, and I can kind of wrap around that idea, you know, but – and maybe it's just because because of who I am. I do I do much better learning just on my own, you know, mm-hmm. and there's nothing I can't look up and find out and learn. You know? That's so, true. You know, I, I, it's just it's just what the amount of tuition is and how nobody's really getting anything out of it anymore, and it's not, not really improving your life. You know, I, I, mm-hmm. I, I you find have to that make it your madness. choice to have it improve your life. You can't okay. go to school and expect everything to be better. You have to make it your choice. Yeah, but you can make it your choice anyway. Mhm. And save three hundred grand. Well, that's your choice, but I can make another choice. <laughs> so I think we can agree on education needing to be improved. And that'll kind yeah. of, I think that should be definitely a foundation for utopia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, utopian people would need to be educated and be taught a, a a kind of level of joy in being educated. Mm-hmm. The joy in learning. Right. At what point do you think you should stop making people go to school? Or do you think that children should not be made to go to school to be educated? That's one of the problems I'm having with my utopia is I'm having a really hard time with the idea of making people do anything. Uh Uh-huh. You know, so, you know, so like on, on, you know, so, so in the society that we are now and how we're raised and everything like that, you know, I've got the knee jerk to say kids should be made to go to school at least to a certain point. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, if everything's going to be taken care of and let the kid be stupid if the kid wants to be stupid. What's that to tell me? Well, the kids don't, they don't you know, know, like, why they should be smart, though. I, every kid, I can vouch that every kid in, like, second, third grade seems like, oh, yeah, I don't want to go to school. What's that? Yeah. And they may also have different learning strategies. Mm-hmm. That's true, too. You know, where maybe going to school is not particularly a good idea for them. Mm-hmm. There's some people, some homeschooling families do something that they call unschooling, which is basically letting the kids learn what they want to learn, not forcing anything on them. Yeah. Like some kids do really good with that. I don't think I would have. My mom kind of tried to do that, and I did. I'm just too lazy. Yeah. There's some kids, like, they'll find what they really love, and they'll just follow that and learn everything about it. It, I think that's kind of what I was talking about, and read, kind of doing education, doing it a different way, is finding what they want to learn and teaching them that instead of everything else they don't want to learn. Yes, and I agree, because frankly, nobody, a, a lot of people do not need to know higher math. And there are a mm-hmm. lot of excellent careers that you could still have without needing to know all of that. And you may be able to specialize better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not definitely. learning things that you do not need to know. Yeah. Wasting time on well, it and wasting brain space. Although higher math can be a lot of fun, too. So. Well, for some people, not me. Exactly. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think right. that so, people so that... So if that's not you, then why put you through it? Yeah. What's the point of that? There should probably be some kind of introductory classes... Oh, definitely. Because you know, how do you know if you don't like string beans if you don't try them? 
<laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, so and everybody you, should be able to budget and stuff like that and add, subtract, multiply. You know, like, enough to be able to live their life and be efficient. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they don't need to know, like, geometry necessarily or trigonometry and what the fuck ever. Yeah. Certainly, if you were going into the sciences, you would need that. Uh, mm-hmm. You would need, you know, if you were a doctor, you would need a certain amount of math. I don't see how a doctor would really use geometry, per se. Maybe surgery? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you know. I, Re- the reconstructing angle surgery. of your intestine does not seem to quite play into it, so let's do <laughs> that that they need to know, you know. Yeah, because uh, everybody's going to be a little bit different anyway, so they so need to know a lot more about anatomy and physiology. Right. You know, architects, they would need to know a lot about geometry mm-hmm. and trigonometry. You know, so they would, you know, um, NASA, they would need that. You know, so teach the people who need to know those things, those things. Mm-hmm. Now, where do you think our food would come from in a utopian society? I definitely think uh, our livestock could be raised a lot differently than we're doing it now in our industrialized. Well, it would it would come it would come oh the, the way we ra- we raise livestock is really horrible and I mm-hmm. I love meat I'm a meat right kid. it's really hard to eat it and it's not good you know. for you the way they raise it like it's not a healthy <laughs> animal. They give it a ton of medication antibiotics so that it lives long enough to butcher and then you're eating all that crap. But that would done, like, a lot of damage as far as antibiotic-resistant strains of bacteria. Yeah. That would all have to come out of the replicators. But, you know, that's where we we would have to come up with, you know, like this, this striving for our utopia and, yeah, and our paradise. But as we're trying to get there, we're going to have to come up with some intermediate solutions. Mm-hmm. Before before we're just all dead. When we come to Utopia, food's not a problem. All comes out of the same replicator as your car comes out of. No big deal. It's just transferring matter into a different form and then eating it. Mm-hmm. So it's no kind of a problem there. But before there, that yes, that that meat itself is is becoming less and less healthy. Uh, again, so that people can make a bigger profit, mm-hmm. so that we're in a place where we are poisoning our food is ridiculous, and something has to be done about that. And, you know, you get into weird things. Uh, like, I, I, one attitude that really kind of bothers me is that is people that that are okay with looking at meat in the supermarket in the packages, Mm -hmm. but they're not okay with the idea that an animal dies. Right. They were too kind of disconnected and dissociated with our food and what it actually is. Yeah, that, that seems to me to be kind of a hypocritical attitude toward it. You know, Mm -hmm. um, I would like to go hunting like once to kind of clear my soul. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? Where right. I have taken this opportunity to 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 honestly kill my own dinner. Mm-hmm. You know, and know where it comes from and know how this goes and all that. Now that's not the same as. Things in the food industry now suck and something has to be done about it. You know, like free range chickens uh-huh. that are not free range chickens. Yeah, they're in a, a big barn, stuffed shoulder to shoulder. They have a cage that's slightly bigger than the other cages. Mm-hmm. And then that becomes, that that is then legally allowed to be called a free range chicken. Yeah, there's lots of shifty stuff going around in the wording of the food that they're trying to sell. Mm-hmm. 
You know, really, yeah, it's because I mean, cause for convenience and for a streamlining the process, they have, you know, each farm specializing in something like, you know, we're just doing chickens, we're just doing this. But if they did it more holistically, no, they're not actually losing that much profit because they're pumping out different products. They have chickens and eggs, and they're pumping out dirt, their soil that we really need. And farmers would buy it and put it on their top soil. And yeah. they're taking in trash, too, for the chickens to go through and eat and turn into soil. And they have worms, too. And they have this plot of land that's, like, really healthy. And they have the different animals going through and doing their part and kind of creating the soil. And there's different avenues for make money on. It's just not as streamlined and easy. Right. But I am thinking he just got hit and cut in, so I'm thinking uh, maybe we wrap up this episode for this week. I, looks like we've done about an hour, so that's a good sized episode. Yeah, um, cool. And we will get together next week. Um, let's see here. We have a Facebook page, so you can find us by doing a search for um, Destination Utopia on Facebook, and you would be able to find us there. We have an email address, which is utopia at undeadcow.com. We have a Twitter account, which is messed up. I forget what that is. It's something like at destination utopia. I think the last bit is cut off, though. Um, um, we are in the iTunes store. I put up a test episode, just a, just a little test piece. Uh, so that is all working. It's in the iTunes store. So the best way to awesome. do that is just search for Undead Cow, and you'll find all of the Undead Cow podcasts there, and that will include Destination Utopia. Um, so those are pretty much my closing remarks for, for this episode. Uh, any parting words? Um, I'm really bad at this. I'm not used to talking to an audience at all. I hope now it's at least halfway interesting. We can take suggestions for different topics about Utopia for us to speak on. And any questions or comments, definitely add that into our conversations here. Help give us some fodder to talk about so I don't get stuck trying to think of things. So for this week, I am Bunny Williams, and once again, you are? I am Rose. And we'll see you in paradise.